Okay, hey everyone, I'm Deb Goodkin, and I'm the Executive Director of the FreeBSD Foundation. Um, welcome everyone to Dublin. Uh, I think I've heard a few people have arrived this morning from the US. Um, I arrived yesterday, so I'm just getting over the jet lag, and then some of you are fortunate to be over on this side of the world and um, are just like aw totally away. So anyway, um, thank you for being here. It's great to see all these faces. Uh, some are new to me and some I've seen um, for a long time, which is really cool. And so typically I'll give a talk on the foundation and what we do to support FreeBSD. Uh, we don't have a lot of time today, especially getting started later. And so what I wanna do is just um, do a quick introduction to who we are and then hand it off to Joe and Ed who are gonna talk more about what we're doing um, to support the software development efforts that are uh, through the foundation. So, um, um, I just skipped. Uh, so who we are, um, so we are US-based, we're a uh, true nonprofit, so we're a US-based uh, 501c3, which means we're for the public good, and we're funded by donations. Uh, so, and we're doing a lot of work, as you'll see when these two talk about what we're doing. Uh, so if you, uh, so thank you to corporations who are here, who I know, who have funded our efforts. It's our efforts and your efforts. And, but if you work at a corporation too, or a university organization, um, and we appreciate if you would ask them to support our efforts too. And then finally, we're here to support you. You're our stakeholders. You are the community that um, we're getting funded to support. And so quickly, I just wanna show uh, faces with names. I think about half of us are here. Uh, so we have Ed and, um, and actually you can just read up here. We have Joe is here, uh, Lee Wen, uh, and let's see, and Kim. Uh, we also have Alice who will be giving a talk shortly and I didn't have time to add her to, um, to our team. She's right here. <laughs> She's not shy, which is awesome. And, um, and so with that, um, I'm gonna head, hand this off to uh, Joe who will talk about uh, the work that we're doing. And then finally, if we do have time, uh, what I wanted to do is open this up to ask us anything and then bring the foundation people up here because a lot of you do know what we do, but we also hear like, I don't know what you do. Or maybe you have ideas of things that you would like to see us do. And so what we wanna do is just open it up um, to give you a chance to ask us questions. So here's Joe. Okay, hello. Um, so as with the past few Dev Summits, I was asked to say a bit about the people who work on the technology team and maybe a sentence or two about what they've been up to lately. Um, so if you're at BSD CAN, if you're at BSD CAN, some of this will be familiar to you. It might be a bit of repetition, but I see lots of new faces. So, um, yeah, um, Ed is uh, the person who leads the technology team, so um, <coughs> it's really Ed does in such a short time. He does a lot uh, from direct development work, uh, lots of mentoring. Uh, he served on core teams. He serves on the SEC team. Um, and recently, I know you've done a lot of work with uh, Greg Wallace on company outreach. Uh, Constantine Belisov is a name that uh, people should be familiar with if you follow uh, source development. Uh, so Constantine is an expert in x86 operations and he's currently working with us on a project to uh, implement an AMD IO MMU driver for FreeBSD. Um, <coughs> when I think of Li Wen, um, the first thing that comes to mind is all the coordination that you do 
um, to bring on young people to FreeBSD and to the foundation. So um, lots of summer students for internship, lots of Google Summer of Code students. Um, Lee Wen has commit bits in all three repositories. Uh, he's worked on a bunch of high profile projects like the conversion to Git, improvements to CI. Um, Pierre joined us initially to work on user land tasks. So uh, Pierre uh, helped with the um, upgrade of OpenSSL in the base system. Uh, he worked on the installer and recently he switched to working on security issues. Uh, I'm a project coordinator or project manager. So that means that my main task is to support the developers. Um, I try to chip in with other things like mentoring. Uh, I admi administer the Google Summer of Code project for us. Um, and when time permits, I also um, do a bit of direct development work, mostly in the Forks tree. Um, these are our long-term contractors. Um, so I use the term generalist for Mark just because he touches so many different parts of the, of the tree. Uh, I think looking at the commit logs, Mark, most of, most of Mark's uh, sponsored commits now are, are coming from Clara and uh, Innovate UK, but Mark still uh, does some work for us. So some mentoring and recently we called on Mark to help bring on a new uh, person, a new developer with the foundation and Mark was very helpful for that. Uh, I also use the term generalist for Olivier because he touches a lot of different parts of the tree as well. Um, rather than me saying anything about Olivier, um, check out his talk here at the conference on um, scheduling priorities. Uh, Tom joined us initially in late 2023 to um, port VPP, so the vector packet processor for, to FreeBSD. Um, he's completed that and he's moved on to some other networking tasks. Um, he finished off full cone NAT for firewalls on FreeBSD and he's also doing some embedded work to bring up uh, a family of uh, ARM Cortex system on a chip systems. Uh, Bjorn does wireless work for us, so hopefully everybody's wireless is working well here. I know mine connected right away, no problems. Um, so he's done a lot of work to improve stability. Uh, still on the to-do list is um, uh, improving speeds and fixing a suspend and resume issue related to wireless. Uh, Mitchell joined us initially as a uh, summer intern or an intern. I don't know if it was in the summer, it was before my time. And he continues to work with us mostly on risk five and improving documentation. Uh, we haven't worked with John recently, but he's uh, on call for us to deal with any pressing security issues or in particular issues, security issues related to Beehive. I think the last project John did with us was um, um, to work on WireGuard. Uh, so the new developer that I was speaking about a moment ago, moment ago is Isaac Freund. So Isaac's going to work on user land tasks and we're excited about the the experience that he's going to bring to us uh, from his work as the lead developer of the River Wayland Compositor. Um, and these are our project con contractors. So Moyne's done a few projects with us. He's um, implemented a CIS benchmark, which is essentially a guide for securing FreeBSD. Um, he's dealt with some ports fallout um, after an upgrade of uh, OpenSSL and LLVM in the base system. Um, he's always also working to improve CI. Mina is working to make FreeBSD a tier one platform for Cloud Init. Pavel is just finishing up a project, an open ZFS project to add uh, hierarchical rate limits. So if you're interested in that, you can head to the open, open ZFS GitHub repository and check out the pull request. Uh, Philip. Philip's been a committer for over 20 years, I believe, and he does a whole lot of work um, on the cluster, and that's how we initially uh, started contracting him. Um, so he first helped to move or set up a new cluster site in Chicago, and his current contract is for 10 hours a month to continue that work, so he's moving more systems over um, from New Jersey to Chicago. 
Charlie just started with us. He's going to work on user land tasks. Um, in particular, he's going to deal with ports fallout uh, related to upgrading or changing the base system uh, bin utils to LLVM bin utils. Uh, Christos was a Google Summer of Code student um, for two summers. Um, he overhauled our mixer. Then he worked with Mark on a new DTrace provider. And now he's interning with us again, or, or contracting with us again, to um, uh, work on audio tasks. So Christos, you're giving a, a talk tomorrow, is it? Tomorrow uh, on that work. So uh, check that out if you're interested. Alfonso, who's here, uh, just started working with us on a vision accessibility project. So he's also going to be talking here. So refer you to that uh, if you're interested. And Chishin has been working with us part time for a while um, to basically support FreeBSD as an OpenStack host. Um, and so, as with the past few Dev Summits, um, I thought it would be nice to look at some commit data just to gauge um, productivity with the usual caveat that commit data is a very kind of rough and crude way of, of, of gauging productivity, but it's also an easy way. So the donut plot on the left um, is a breakdown of the sponsored commits to the source tree over the past year. Um, and since BSD can, not much has dramatically changed. Um, so the proportion of commits to the tree that are sponsored are, is creeping up. It's now up to about 45% over the last year. Um, as before, about a third of those commits are sponsored by the foundation. And it's, as I said the last time, it's nice to see lots of color because that means there's lots of different entities sponsoring work uh, in the source tree. And so on the right, this bar plot is sort of a measure um, or an indication of how that, or, or it, it's basically the proportion of all source commits that are sponsored by the foundation, and that's a way to gauge how that, that, that uh, productivity from the foundation has changed over time. Um, and it's, you know, since about 2019, it's been fairly stable, just fluctuating around 15%. Uh, um, now that we've brought on a few hires, it'll be interesting to see how 2024 ends up. Um, and finally, I'll just say a few words about Google Summer of Code. We've been participating every year since the beginning, so 20 years. Um, in total, we've had 274 projects, 11 this year in 2024. Um, we had some, over those years, we've had some really nice projects. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, we've had uh, new DTrace providers, the sound mixer overhaul, contri contributions to PKG. Um, and that's really nice to get, you know, new and useful code committed to the tree. But it's also, or, or, or in my opinion, the most valuable part is drawing young, new people to the project. And we've done that. We've got uh, some really prolific committers. We have uh, someone who was on the core team that was introduced to FreeBSC through Google Summer of Code. Um, and here are the 11 projects from this year. Um, I don't have time to go through all of those, um, but if you're interested, we, we do a pretty good job on the site of uh, documenting everything, or the, the students themselves do a good job. Um, maybe I'll just take one moment to thank everybody that has mentored. Um, it's often the same people year after year, so we're really appreciative to all the, the major time commitment that these people put in. Um, yeah, and I think that's all I have, so Ed, I will pass it on to you. All right, thanks, Joe. So I'm going to talk a little bit um, about some individual uh, grant projects that we've, we've funded, and then some larger scale projects that are um, underway now that are uh, either um, uh, well underway or, or sort of just beginning. So the first one uh, I'll mention here is um, a collaboration with AMD to bring up a, an IOMMU driver um, for AMD processors. So this is, uh, this arose from our work to, to just bring up FreeBSD on high core count uh, AMD systems. Um, we need to be able to support interrupt remapping to be able to, to accommodate uh, the, the number of um, 
uh, IO AFIX and um, interrupt uh, destinations in when we have, have that, that large scale. Um, and of course, we want to be able to use the IOMMU for um, any sort of, uh, uh, for the purposes that, uh, like we, we want the, the driver to be available there anyway, but the, what prompted the work to, 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 to begin was the need to, to support um, interrupts on, on the large system like that. So um, Caustic is, um, is tasked with this. Caustic has um, the work largely complete. Um, it, is, it boots uh, to single user mode. He's trying to track down um, a bug right now, but um, it is, um, uh, it's largely complete and um, uh, seems to be uh, working reasonably well. Um, next item on the list is we worked with RGNets uh, to bring VPP up on FreeBSD. So VPP is a user space uh, networking um, stack, basically a, a bunch of functionality for doing high performance networking in user space. Um, and Linux was the, the original, um, the, the initial target uh, for it. There was some interest back and forth, uh, on and off sort of in other backends, um, other uh, operating systems over time, but um, nothing was really functional. Uh, Tom Jones took this on when he started uh, with the foundation and did the work to bring up FreeBSD. Um, and the upstream project has been really, really uh, excited about this work and collaborative. Um, there's a blog post from some people who are deeply involved in, uh, in VPP um, uh, and talking about the, the process of bringing FreeBSD in and bringing testing up um, on FreeBSD on VPP. So the, the work is in, um, uh, is in the upstream project now and it, VPP is available in our, our ports tree. Um, there's ongoing work to, to do, uh, I think, to, um, uh, the, the base functionality is all there and just as people s start to use it and explore it, there may be additional things that they wanted to tackle, but the, the base functionality, the infrastructure is, um, is there. Okay, screw language maker. Uh, the next one is um, the endpoint independent mapping NAT uh, work. And so this is a project that someone in the community submitted um, many years ago. I can't remember exactly, um, exactly how long, but uh, based on the review number there, 11137, you can see that it's, um, you know, it was submitted as a, a review in fa Fabricator quite some time ago. Um, and I had a co-op student, um, uh, Naman, who worked on this for um, part of their internship um, and sort of rebased the work forward, added some tests, um, and um, and fixed some some issues with the the initial submission, uh, but it still wasn't quite ready to be to be integrated. Um, and so this is another project that Tom has taken on since he's been working for us. Um, basically, ported it forward again, um, added a few more tests and, and debugged some issues, um, and. Uh, with Christoph's help, um, sort of iterated on fixing the um, outstanding issues and getting it into a committable state. Um, so it's in um, it's in the tree now and um, is uh, is working and um, and complete. So the next uh, next item I wanted to talk about um, is one of the uh, larger projects that um, uh, that Greg uh, was instrumental in, kind of getting us involved in. And so there's some slides here from the uh, Open Source Summit Europe conference, uh, which was in Vienna immediately um, prior to this, or is still going on, I guess. Um, I, was, uh, I was there um, uh, just before coming here and participated in an Alpha Omega roundtable um, session. Um, so the Alpha Omega project, um, the, the, their mission statement um, is here, but basically, um, with money from uh, Google, Microsoft, and uh, um, uh, AWS, uh, basically the hyperscalers, um, they are looking at funding um, work to improve security across the open source uh, ecosystem.
And so the, the, the two categories, um, they basically say the, the alpha projects are targeted investments in individual um, projects, and then the omega projects, um, they're trying to scale uh, their work across the, the whole ecosystem. So scale projects would be things like improving fuzzing tools so that all, um, uh, all open source projects can, can benefit from, um, from improved tooling, or um, uh, pro tools to sort of investigate transitive dependencies in, um, in projects, things, things of that nature, whereas the, the alpha projects are, um, they fall into sort of one of um, four different categories, but they, they might fund a maintainer to work on something um, uh, on a long-term basis. Um, they, uh, one of the things they do is fund uh, audits, either process or code audits, and that's their typical way that they'll evaluate and sort of get involved with a, a new project. Um, so that's, that was our uh, relationship with them. They funded a code audit um, for us that I'll get to in, in just a minute. And that's sort of how they, they like to start often. Um, so this is just a list of the, um, also taken from the, the talk um, uh, earlier this week, of the different engagements that they've, um, they've taken on. So w one of the, the main things that uh, we did with them is um, we funded uh, um, a code audit of a couple of specific code areas um, with Synactive, uh, which is a, an offensive security um, firm in France. Uh, we talked to a few different firms um, and several of them were um, more competent, but it came down to just sort of capabilities and price um, that, uh, um, that led us to, uh, to choose these ones. Um, and so there's uh, um, the, the cover uh, and a little snippet of the inside of the report that they produced uh, on here. Um, and so uh, about two weeks ago, we had a, um, a fairly big batch of security advisories um, that arose out of this work. Um, there's one more uh, underneath that bar there to come out shortly. Um, I think that is the extent of the, uh, the issues that they identified that we are treating as embargoed security advisories. Um, I'll get to that in, in just a moment. But um, we will release this, this report uh, once all of the, the um, sensitive information um, is public through either code reviews or in the tree or security advisories have come out. Um, so the next steps on this code audit process, um, there's 14 open issues right now, some of them um, have no security impact. They're basically, um, you know, sort of code cleanliness issues or um, they commented on things that might be confusing or, or um, could be improved, but there's, there is no, um, no specific security impact. Um, and then also low and medium severity issues um, that we want to get fixed, um, but we don't believe need to be treated as embargoed, um, of embargoed the, the, with the embargoed process. So once, once those are addressed, um, we're gonna publish the report that they produced, um, but one of the other things that we've committed to and, and are doing as part of this, this effort um, is we wanna apply the lessons that come from the specific issues that they've identified uh, more broadly across um, the FreeBSD tree and, and then generally um, across open source uh, and our dependencies and things like that if, if we can. Um, so the first, the first uh, goal of ours is to basically just take the specific issues that they've raised and look for other instances of the same problem across um, different, different parts of the tree. I mean, that's a fairly straightforward next step. Um, and um, the goal is to kind of keep extending that, moving further and further up to say, you know, what is, not, not just the specific issue or the specific issue across the tree, but sort of how can we prevent this in a more holistic, more general um, way? And then one of the, final things here um, is we've got, I think, um, 7,500 or so open uh, Bugzilla bugs in the source tree um, today, and we have quite a lot of issues in our um, uh, stat covariate static analysis reports, um, and many of those are, many of those are false positives, um, and so, you know, I think it's not really feasible for us to go in and look through um, all of the static analysis reports. Um, but my question is basically, um, 
how can we uh, look for signals in the, the data that we have there um, uh, and try to identify potential other issues um, from that, from those sorts of sources or, or other sources. Um, so th that's sort of the next, the next goals um, in that effort. Um, next uh, engagement here, um, the Sovereign Tech Fund. So this, um, uh, this is uh, an organization that's supported by the uh, German Ministry for Economic Affairs and Climate Action um, and the German Federal Agency for Disruptive Innovation. And so they've been basically looking at trying to make open source sustainable and, um, and move open source to uh, find uh, models and funding to make open source uh, and with a security focus um, uh, um, sustainable. Uh, and so we've, we have a um, engagement with them now that um, uh, has, has, is broken down into what they call work packages. And so basically there's five separate sort of sub projects within the, um, the engagement with SPF. Um, the first one that we're starting with um, is, is broadly billed as pay down technical debt. Uh, and we're, um, we've interpreted that to, to be um, code or uh, uh, bug backlog review, um, trying to analyze and um, understand information about our uh, 7,500 open bugs in the, the source tree. Um, you know, we, we will um, put resources to, you know, on addressing as, uh, some of that backlog as well, but it's sort of categorizing, understanding the backlog, and um, and helping uh, to address things. Um, and then the next um, the next four uh, items on this list largely are are not starting this year. Um, really, uh, next year is what we're primarily looking at. Um, but it includes things like being able to build um, uh, artifacts without needing root or special per, uh, permissions. Um, reproducible builds uh, fits into the, the zero trust builds category. Um, CI and CD efforts um, across source tree and ports. Um, uh, and then um, additional work, especially uh, at the end, um, we have uh, efforts to try and collect SBOM information, which is of interest and importance for a lot of downstream consumers of FreeBSD. So be able to produce documentation and reports that, um, that users of FreeBSD can consume um, to identify the, uh, all of the different software that uh, is included in FreeBSD um, and uh, the, the provenance information. And then finally, uh, we have an effort starting up on laptop and desktop usability. Um, and so we, um, We'll have uh, some, some more information about this uh, released uh, um, fairly shortly, but um, we've had financial contributions from a company called Quantum Leap Research. Um, uh, the foundation is going to uh, invest uh, from general funds, and then we've also had offers of uh, in-kind, uh, uh, in-kind offers basically either development support or um, or hardware available, uh, available from Framework. So Framework's been, um, been a very good, uh, um, uh, we've, we've done a lot of work with Framework um, uh, to, well, free, free Framework has done a lot of work on FreeBSD um, uh, recently, and so this presentation is from my, um, uh, from my Framework. Um, but basically the, the project overall um, has a, quite a few sub-projects um, within it, and we're gonna divide this work up either through um, projects that staff or long-term contractors within the foundation um, will take on, uh, targeted calls for proposals for specific items, um, if we don't have sort of anyone in the pipeline or um, on staff who, who's uh, suited for it. Um, in some cases, um, we're gonna collaborate with other vendors uh, and community members who have work in, in progress so for example, the um, uh, UVC video um, uh, driver, there's a um, uh, pull request open to, with a, an implementation of, of that um, already. And so you know, we'll, we'll help facilitate and support work that's, in the, um, that's coming from others to, to bring it in. Um, and 
I think that's the, um, the end of uh, what I have to say. So um, with that, I think we can open it up to um, questions either about uh, technical work um, or um, the foundation in general. Uh, and I'll, I'll repeat the question, uh, um, Colin. Um, that, that's a good question. Where, where does where does the specific number um, uh, come from? I think um, I I don't know off the top of my head how to um, to, to sort of explicitly. Um, uh, It, it, it's not it's not a round number of, of US dollars or or um, or anything it, it really is just sort of um, you know we we, um, we submitted a proposal with a bunch of different um, different projects and estimates for how much um, uh, work is is involved in in them and and that's sort of where it came out to Any other questions? Mark. Yeah, so Mark's, uh, Mark's question basically is that our Coverity instance has false positives in it, um, but it appears to be, uh, or and it appears to be um, somewhat unmaintained. Um, it's not clear how to add new developers into it or add um, code models uh, so that it can, um, it can understand intricacies or, or you know, do a better analysis of our code. Um, and are we looking into either a self-hosted Coverity or, or addressing that somehow. Um, I think that is, um, it's definitely an interesting question. It's not in scope for um, the specific projects that we have, have here, but I think it is something that is, um, you know, is very much um, of interest. Um, so we, we did have a self-hosted Coverity instance um, quite some time ago, um, uh, prior to them offering the, the Open source free free service basically, um, uh, and it was retired um, after the they made the um, the standoff at Coverity.com available. Um, so I'm not I'm not sure what the the path forward for for addressing Coverity um, will be, but I think it is something that um, that we should uh, the royal we that um, I think within the project we should try to find. Um, what we, we hope to do, and if there's funding that's needed from the foundation to help make that happen, then we can um, we can we can take it on. Yeah, I mean, I think I think um, in some cases we sort of we had. You know, one um, one person in the FreeBSD community who was really engaged and sort of maintaining it, and then if they don't have time uh, as much time available, um, it just sort of uh, fell by the wayside. And so, you know, I think there's um, uh, that may well be something that um, either we need to find someone else in the community or um, someone in the foundation um, to to try and work with um, Coverity and sort of get that back into a good. Good shape. Warner's got a question. Uh, Ron. Um, my question is simply it's kind of based in um, what is the difference between that and the retired group? And uh, how do we sort of get to the point of saying here's the name of the retired group for all these data and all these different tools? Uh, does that solve any issues? And are there issues for um, interpretation? 
So, I will say that the, um, the so we, we sort of have the high level um, tasks that I listed on the slide and then underneath those there's slightly more detailed subtasks, but it's really not very prescriptive um, at all about how, about exactly what we're going to do to achieve those goals. Um, and so I, I, you know, I very much don't want the, the, the takeaway here to be that, you know, we're going to do a whole bunch of work and we're going to say this is how it's going to be done. Um, the, the goal really is to, um, to understand the problem and invest resources to solve it in the way that is right for the project. Um, and so, you know, in, in, I mean, I think from my personal perspective, um, I'm very much invested in being able to build release artifacts without requiring root. Um, and so if the, um, you know, uh, for, for the source uh, tree and uh, ISO images and things, um, you know, uh, if we just assume packages come from somewhere and we don't really look too too much into that, that process is um, is fairly easy to to do in a. Um, it's fairly easy to get to a place where release media is built without requiring root. Um, if if the answer is you know, how can we use Kubeair to build? Um, without needing root and there's some work that needs to be done to be able to support that and that's what everyone agrees on, you know, then, then absolutely we can um, put resources behind making that happen. Colin? Yeah, so um, Colin um, pointed out that it's fairly easy to build one um, architecture, uh, so basically build build release media for one architecture directly um, without root, but the, the release uh, engineering team's tools that build the whole set um, uh, make use of, of ZFS uh, and, um, and things like that. And yeah, absolutely, that's something that, um, you know, I think we can, um, that, that, that's certainly input into to looking at what um, what we can try and develop under this um, this process, and I mean, I think fundamentally, I think um, there's a lot of similarity between the issues there and Poudrier's um, uh, use of, of ZFS and and, and jails. Um, like, there's there's a, there's a lot of sort of um, uh, um, a, a lot of, of potential overlap and and things to investigate there. Ellen's got a question behind you there, uh, John. Yeah, so I think um, that's one of the things, um, just sort of my, my personal take is that in FreeBSD, th this is an impression I have, um, you know, for quite some time that we build a lot of great tools, um, we build a lot of great infrastructure, um, and we sometimes are not as good about kind of having prescriptive uh, ways to use them. Um, and so I think like that, that's, that's a great, comment, Alan, that, um, you know, I think if we just sort of, we can say, like, we'll, you know, we'll use this user to, um, as part of our, um, our, 
our build process and um, have the, um, you know, we'll, we'll assume, I think we can assume uh, ZFS um, for the, um, for, uh, as sort of a requirement or, or a, um, a condition for um, some of the work that's, that's going here and, and build it out there. Um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit uh, later on about um, uh, some of that as well. Alan's got another. Oh. Another question over here? I think Alan, do you have another question, Alan? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have um, no idea of how many languages there is that are other than Angular? Um, so I think, like, we're, we're really on a sort of. Um, we have a high level view, I think, of what we're looking for, but we're really on a, um, a bit of an investigation and fact finding mission at the moment to, to really understand what we want to, um, to do. So um, that is something I'm very interested in talking about um, and, and getting input on. So, I mean, I, I don't think I don't think we're looking so much at, you know, I, I have an arbitrary system, I want to produce SBOMs for what's already here, um, but um, I think as, the base system is definitely in scope, um, but I think also like looking at whether we can add support into, uh, to package um, to, to um, pass through SBOM information or, or collate and collect it and produce um, output would be something of, of interest. John's, John's bringing the mic over. I think we, we have two questions over here too, John, so. Okay, yeah, I would be very interested in, um, in chatting with you about uh, some of the, the specifics uh, behind that. Um, so I don't currently have um, any um, any sort of planned or scoped work for for eBPF support. Um, I think that is something that um, you know. I think in general, um, in general, I think when um, information like that comes um, uh, uh, comes to the community, I think we we, we definitely want to start um, in venues like this, sort of of having. Um, discussions to to find where where the, where the interest is lies and find more you know all the, the people with um, with similar uh, goals and and similar interest in it and um, you know see about how um, it, see if, if if we sort of as a community agree that this is something that um, we need to do um, then look at funding a, a more or um, Kicking off a project to to make it um, it make it happen. I agree. Um, you know, I think the 
the Google Summer of Code project to, to sort of explore it was, you know, it was great for a, um, a student to be able to spend a little bit of time and investigate it. Um, but I think, you know, it, it is something that if we decide it is important um, for us to do, then we're going to, it's going to take a, um, a broader effort for, a, for the, um, the project to get a um, uh, compelling and maintainable implementation. Any other questions? Yeah, so that's a, that's a great question, um, uh, and I think um, that question is sort of somewhat more, um, you know, it's it's the FreeBSD community that needs to set that direction. Um, the foundation, you know, we, we fund um, we fund projects, and we you know we'll, we will try to advance um, uh, the project in ways that. Um, uh, that we feel are important through discussions with the community and 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 whatnot. But I think um, I think in in the case of in the case of, of sort of the policy on Rust in in FreeBSD, um, we really need um, the uh, the source manager team, which we'll hear more about um, later today, um, or maybe tomorrow, um, and uh, the core team to kind of. Uh, and or the core team to, to sort of um, uh, establish that wh wh where we want to go there. Um, and then, you know, with, with sort of a, an agreement within the community that that is something we want to support, um, that's absolutely something that the foundation can then say, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll provide resources to make this happen. Um, my perspective is I think there is a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of value of being able to, especially for downstream consumers to be able to support um, Rust uh, in the kernel in a um, uh, in a consistent and like officially upstream supported um, uh, method, um, you know, even even if you know, I think there's there's no there's no desire or plan to rewrite any um, existing um, portions of the kernel in Rust. But if um, you know, if a vendor um, had a network driver or something that that was multi-platform and, and in Rust. Um, I think we very much want to be able to um, accommodate that within FreeBSD. Um. Thank you. I would just say based on uh, the mail that's come in through the foundation and um, past discussions, my take is that and I refer to what Brooks said in some discussions, I think it was at BSD Can. it's inve inevitable, it's going to happen, it's just how it's gonna happen. Um, you know, now that the line between the base, or the line between the base system and, and not the base system is gonna probably blur a little bit with package base, so there's, there's different ways it can happen. I don't know when, but my take, if you know, if I looked at the crystal ball, I think it's gonna happen one way or the other, it's just when and how. All right, and I think this will be the last question. Uh, I'm getting the, uh, the hook. Um, the, the, the big problem with Rust, apart from those that don't make their way to the, the, the base, um, is that um, Rust has previously, as I've explained to you, I think there's a lot of people who are interested in FreeBSD. The question for the foundation is, is that something that you can work with the Rust foundation to try and change? Yeah, so I mean, I think that kind of gets to the, the um, uh, the point I was making earlier that, you know, if, if the FreeBSD community sort of officially decides 
um, that the, the FreeBSD, FreeBSD project leadership decides that this is an avenue to, to explore, um, you know, we can absolutely uh, look at resources to make sure that Rust on, um, that Rust upstream um, has good CI for FreeBSD or whatever the, um, whatever's outstanding um, preventing us from, from moving up from tier three. Um, you know, I think that is, that is absolutely something the foundation can um, can invest in as a result of that uh, the community um, decision or community uh, process. All right, thank you. <laughs>